this video we are trying to follow this book cloud-based remote sensing with google earth engine and we are going through part a2 aquatic and hydrological applications and we are trying to follow this chapter a2.1 groundwater monitoring with grass so this chapter is about the evaluation of the changes in groundwater storage for a large river basin uh, and it applies the remote sensing uh, for the estimation of the total water storage anomalies it uses the land surface model outputs and also the in-situ observations to resolve the groundwater storage changes uh, somewhere in california so the video is just the quick go through the codes or the sections of the codes and it is not exactly the details of the process and this is somewhat to make ourselves aware about the chapter. And this is definitely for them who are very interested in the groundwater storage analysis. So let's begin. So here we are importing the basins. So this is the uh, feature collection or our set file in Earth Engine. Then here these are the codes. Uh, so this relates to some areas or let's say some uh, specific points and then we're filtering these codes from the main feature collection then we are centering this object with the zoom level 6 uh, this makes this feature collection appear at the map section and then we are adding this as a layer with the color green and here is this is the name of that layer the true means it will be uh, it will there it will be there by default and the zoom level is uh, sorry and the opacity is 0 0.5 and then we are doing this uh, import of the image collection so this is the crop data layer of USA and here we are filtering the debt uh, specifically for the year 2019 and we're selecting this uh, band called cultivated and this is again added this as the layer uh, by selecting the first from that uh, image collection and clipping it to our area of interest with no uh, colors or anything zoom uh, sorry the name of that layer is cropland uh, and by default it will appear in the map section and the opacity is 0 0.5 so these are the way to uh, import the feature collection and add them as the layer and here are some other types of the feature collection these are again the save files or the as you can see here in the map section these are the points and add it as the layer so we did the such things here so the first one is this study area and then we have this uh, very transparent layer this is because we have the 0 0.5 as the transparent layer if this would happen one then this should happen somewhat of back in nature but this is 0 0.5 similarly we have the cropland so this is the cropland here the cultivated from the NASA CDL data and then we have the reservoirs so these are the points so basically we just uh, imported the three different uh, types of data two feature collection one image collection then we move ahead so i am not going to explain or i am not that aware about these kind of analysis but what you can see here is the selection of this band called lwe underscore thickness and we can check this here by searching here and the, by typing the name you can search about this data set so the band is the LWE underscore thickness and it means the equivalent uh, liquid uh, liquid water thickness in centimeters and we can also see the minimum and uh, maximum and the units are in the centimeter and for knowing about this data set we can uh, read more about in the description 
So here, uh, basically the band is being selected from this image collection and we are plotting that by ui.chart or image.series and uh, plotting things are very easier in Earth Engine. Uh, we are here selecting, sorry, we are here filtering for the uh, years beginning from 2003 to 2016. Our reason is that area of interest and we are reducing it by the mean and then we are here doing this options for tidal, horizontal axis and vertical axis so this will give some uh, some visualization in the chart and we are seeing something like this here in the console so these are uh, here ups and downs uh, so somewhere the values are below zero and in some years the values are above uh, zero and here some uh, linear regression has been done for that uh, we start with adding the variables so we take the uh, image as the parameter and in that image uh, we uh, first get the dates from that image by uh, accessing or getting that system colon time underscore start so this is the time property of that image and this is converted into the date by ee dot date and then we are doing the difference between the date to the best year or something some year as here as a the year of 2003 and we are returning the new bands here the first one is the years which is being renamed as t and the second one is the constant uh, image and then we add this uh, new bands to the this brain basin TWSA and this one is this one here this LWE underscore thickness we are adding these to the bands and here we're selecting them as the independence so the first one is the constant image and the second one is something here as the T or the time band and then we are doing this dependent as the uh, string and then we are selecting the independence and adding the dependence then we are reducing it by the linear equation uh, independence and so the uh, so this will result the two bands as written here residuals and two into one band called the coefficients from from that result we will select the coefficients and this coefficients are turned into the two band in maze and that coefficient uh, is the coefficient will select the t and that is added as the layer so this is the simple way to do the linear regression in uh, earth engine and this can certainly vary with different types of data set but uh, this is the simple way we can do and the result is something like this here uh, and as the data set is very coarse in this case so some values are here and so based upon the different values the colors are somewhere different or somewhere somewhere darker so this is the second section and we will quickly go through the other sections so here uh, what has been done is uh, the imports are, are being done so the there are two different imports at the very top we can see uh, lots of images uh, and these are uploaded to the art engine so these are done uh, manually but in the talks uh, we would see the uploads being done uh, while we do the process uh, but here we are uh, uploading the uh, images so these images uh, relate something towards the uh, soil moisture images and snow water equivalent images and these images are uh, are converted into the list first and then these lists are again converted into the image collection uh, by this function here and then the units conversions are being done and for that uh, we are mapping the function again we are doing the state we will get the year and then the selection is being done and then we are multiplying 
with the constant, renaming the band, and providing the trine properties. So even in these three lines, so many things are going on. Uh, but the basic thing is we are converting the unit and providing the time property to that uh, image. And then we uh, plot that image. So the title is here is the soil moisture anomalies. And you can see the scale is very coarse. Uh, so this can change based upon the data set. And uh, the way to make the uh, charts are very much similar for other uh, data set as well. So this is the function here, you write dot chart dot image dot series. Uh, we have the image collection uh, filtering uh, that image collection done within uh, within the function. And then we have the set chart type as the scatter chart. And the nice thing about this chart is we are also adding this uh, this line, trend line uh, with the color uh, something as red or dark red and this trend line is fastly zero so depending on the number of bands uh, we can add different uh, trend lines uh, to the chart so this is the first chart and same thing has been done so as said before the first one is the soil moisture images and the second one is the snow water equivalent images so same thing for uh, the snow water equivalent images we convert those single images into the list and those uh, lists of images are converted into the image collection again conversion uh, of the unit here and making this as the chart with the addition of this nice trend line so uh, what this trend line just uh, simply means is that there has been some decreasing trend uh, of both in these cases but this uh, certainly requires more observation and understanding to interpret what's going on the chart. Then we jump to the next section here. So it starts with the extraction of the geometry. Uh, here we are converting this feature collection into the geometry. So this geometry is needed to do some calculation of the area or uh, finding the uh, finding the total area. So in this case, we are doing this dot area to find the area of that uh, area of that region and we're dividing it with the constant to uh, do some calculations or the conversion into some other units. So in this case, the conversion is being done for uh, for for converting it into the centimeter. And here we're converting the CSP to the image collection. Uh, here some conversion to the list has been done. Uh, and basically here some uh, here some here some uh, works and the image collection has been done. Uh, basically it says that we are mapping the function to that. Uh, this by adding the dates and also adding the constant and also doing some conversion of the units and then we're doing this time series of the surface water anomalies so here is the chart for the surface water anomalies so basically here conversion of the CSP is being done for the image collection. Then we move to the last part. So this last part is about the uh, combination of the two different data sets. So we are trying to combine different, uh, different types or different data sets uh, based on the time properties. So here we have the uh, filter. So it says ee dot filter dot equals. So the left field and the right field. So the two different data sets are filtered based on the time properties. So the first uh, data and the second data needs to have similar or this or this uh, range of the time 
uh, that needs to be matched. And here we see this uh, join, uh, e.join.ina, so this creates the join. Uh, from here we are joining the GLDS data. So in this case, there's two different data sets created before here. Yes, these are the data sets that we created before, or the image collection. And then, and then again, this has been joined further to the other uh, data, that is the reusable data. And this is continued for the other data as well. So this has been uh, continuously done. So the joins are very important. Uh, they work just like the dplyr in R. And finally some expression is being done here. So this is the equation for computing the groundwater storage analysis. And the chart has been drawn called the changes in the groundwater storage. So again, the trend is decreasing, meaning the groundwater storage is decreasing over the years. And here is the final uh, calculation being done. So here we're doing this number, subtracting it with some constant, again dividing it with the other constant and multiplying it with some other constant. So basically, we are looking at the values from the start of 2012 to the end of 2016 drought and this gives the value uh, somewhere like this uh, which means the kilometer cube in a groundwater so this means the uh, water that was lost so basically this is the chapter I tried to go through the uh, codes and there are certainly so many nice things to learn from this chapter. So the first one is here, the joints. Uh, this can be very uh, uh, very nice or very confusing uh, while observing the joints because the joints are playing the roles in uh, combining the two different data sets and the uh, and the second one I would say is uh, importing these uh, data sets sorry, the importing the images and converting it into the image collection, this would be very much uh, useful for our own cases as well. And the other one is, as you see, the drawing the trend lines. This is very easy with doing these trend lines and then providing the color and the earth engine will automatically cross the trend line and it will show if the, uh, if the trend is in increasing or upwarding trend. And these are the things uh, that you can learn, but there are certain other things uh, we can still master. The, the very first thing is uh, the way to uh, monitor the groundwater. I haven't gone through the process why it's being done uh, or why this particular method has been chosen. So there are some other things uh, we still need to uh, learn. And please go through the chapter once and uh, you will certainly learn so many things. Uh, I would uh, say this chapter is nice, uh, but not that nice like the previous chapters. But anyway, so many things are there to learn. So if you have watched this video till the end, I would say thank you for watching.